Hi, I'm Ralph Albert Thomas, CEO and Executive Director for the New Jersey Society of CPAs, and welcome to another Issues Watch Extra Edition. Today I have the pleasure of having Michelle Sukurka, uh, who is the President and CEO of the New Jersey Business and Industry, better known as BIA. Yes. So welcome, Michelle. We're Thank glad you to have you here. And just uh, as I, before we get into our, our chat and conversation, I just want to say it's been an extreme pleasure, you know, working with uh, BIA. And particularly now, I think we're working towards a more enriched and enhanced relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's been great. And Michelle's been on board, is it six months yet? Uh, just past six months. Just yes. past <laughs> six months here. So we, I, she's got a lot to talk about in that, that six months. So uh, well, let's get started. Um, both of us have done surveys amongst our constituents and members. I know our survey uh, indicated optimism, but sort of a, a reduced optimism, mm -hmm. if you will. And also our survey from our national organization, the American Institute of CPAs, kind of indicated the same thing. But what are, you, what are you hearing from your members? So we, we conducted our annual business outlook survey. And what our members told us is that they were entering 2015 cautiously optimistic right. for what would, what would lie ahead. So people always ask us, well, optimism is good, but why cautious? Mm -hmm. And cautious because they need regulatory and political certainty, and businesses don't feel as though they have it right now in the state of New Jersey, and we can understand why. Um, we are constantly um, in the face of new mandates, regulatory mandates. Um, we are the highest tax state in the nation. And coming into uh, the year before the budget address, they certainly businesses didn't know what to expect with uh, the looming budget, being concerned about you know gaps in the operating fund. And usually when that happens, um, it falls on the back of business. So the good news is when Governor Christie presented the budget, um, he said some good things for business. He right. said no new taxes, which is great. Okay. He uh, continued the uh, investment in tax credits, the five-year tax credit program for small business, um, which will yield $600 million in this next uh, budget year. So that's good news to business. He talked about revamping the BEEP program, the Business Employer Incentive Program, taking it out of the, the, the general fund, um, out of the appropriation process, and giving more stability and certainty to it. So that's great for business. And then the last thing he said is, we're going to take on the pension crisis in the state of New Jersey. So I think that was the type of message that businesses were looking for, but the process hasn't ended yet, because as we know, the legislature has the budget now. So we've got to remain um, pretty steadfast over the next you know, month uh, to see where the legislature is going to come. Yeah, and, and I think uh, as I sat there in the, in the chamber and hearing the, the governor's message and, and some of the folks that were around, around me, I think they were expecting to hear a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I know from our member standpoint, they were expecting to hear possibly a movement towards the reform of the estate inheritance tax because that's been a big issue uh, that has been res resonated uh, real loud and clear in the survey that we did with our members uh, working in conjunction with uh, Franklin and Marshall University. And so I know I sat there and I said, wow, I really expected to hear him you know, speak on something of that. So what we took away from the budget address was we heard about you know the, uh, looking at the pension reform and things on the pension side and some of the other programs, but we really didn't. We were expecting that aggressive, you know, statement coming out. Well, I guess he did say, "I will not. I no will veto taxes, in, uh, yeah. any new, no any new proposals taxes. on new Absolutely, taxes." Absolutely, which is huge. Yeah. It, which is huge, which is yeah. great, and, and certainly resonates with our members. But mm -hmm. I think one of the things that was a real big concern because, and, and we shared our survey with you. The fact that 80, 81 percent of our members felt that this is what is causing people to leave yes. New Jersey because we are the we have one of the worst, or we probably have the most onerous. Um, we commonly for, refer to them as death taxes uh, in the country, yes. and for nothing to be said. And, be, and prior to that, there was a lot of buzz around that area. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of discussion going on. There were, I guess, close to a dozen bills in. So. Um, were you, were you looking for that, or was I the only one that was looking for no, that to happen? No, no that, that's fair, but I, I, I believe that that issue has to start from the legislative side mm -hmm. because it's going to require legislation to make the change. Um, and I believe what happened is, unfortunately, those taxes became the victim of the debate over the gas tax, which we know went yeah. nowhere. Uh, and then what happened is, once we weren't talking about the gas tax anymore, and so the estate and inheritance tax, or one of them, was supposed to be the offset, so there'd be a net neutral, right. everybody forgot about the fact that those two taxes are significant issue. 
So once gas tax came off, unfortunately, the unintended consequences, so did a state inheritance tax. Uh, but that means that we need to continue to elevate the pitch on that because you're absolutely right, Ralph, that is a significant issue. And that truly, I believe, that's what's driving outward migration the most right now. I know, I know our members, you know, in addition to feeling that way, they actually counsel their clients that because uh, it's a they fiduciary, fiduciary, fiduciary response. Absolutely. We talk about this all the time, fiduciary, <laughs> fiduciary responsibility, responsibility right. uh, to do that. Otherwise, they would be, well, in jeopardy of losing the client, but the client would probably come back and want to sue them because they didn't give them the right, the, the right. sage advice on, in that regard. So um, do you think is any possibility of anything happening by the time, by June 30th? On Not on issues? that issue, no. Okay. Now, I think um, for June 30th, we what we have to be conscious of is the millionaire's tax that yeah. has been proposed by Senate President Sweeney, Sweeney. which we know the governor's going to veto. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean we stay quiet. We are, we are all ready to go you know, do our march on the state steps about why a millionaire's tax is a small business tax. And right. you know that as well as we do. Um, majority of the companies in the state of New Jersey are small business. Many of them, uh, their profit for their company runs through their personal return because they're ex S Corp. And of course, they are directly impacted on millionaire's tax. Well, you can count on us being on the state, uh, the steps of the state capital right along with your hand in hand because uh, it is clear it, that is an issue that I'm, really resonates with our members, uh, the, the whole talk of that. Because it, and I, I guess, I don't know, I haven't had a chance to look at what the uh, Senate President has proposed, but I, I guess in the past, it's really not been a millionaire's tax. It's been you know, in, in individuals in the 400,000 yeah. and above, and you know, it's the, of course, those that are over a million get the biggest surcharge, but yes. uh, I know when we looked at it, you know, it was probably four, back uh, when the governor was in his first administration, first uh, term, um, we found that 56% uh, of the people that were in that bucket had S-Corps, yes. uh, Schedule C's, they weren't clipping coupons. No. Uh, they were people who had small businesses that were employing people here in the state. So it's, re it's really a concern uh, of ours if that would happen. I think we would start to see a mass exodus. Going back to state and inheritance tax, uh, July 1, we start the campaign. Again. Again. And, and we say it's stronger and louder and louder and louder. And we've been establishing um, a whole bunch of statistics and data. Uh, that that will prove to be persuasive on the impact that those taxes has on outward migration. Okay, well, count us in. Any anything that we can bring to the table on that, I think we'll, we'll like because of what we're seeing from our members. Uh, I know we did another survey. We're, well, we've been doing we're a lot of survey, research. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're surveyed out yet, but we're. Uh, I know we're doing a lot of research, and we did one with one of our partners, Capital One, uh, uh, at our last convention. We uh, did a uh, survey of uh, those individuals who were attending, and we asked them what were some of the challenges that they felt were impacting the business community. And what they came up with, and I think this is in order, uh, certainly regulatory requirements and changes, um, employee and benefit cost, mm -hmm. uh, domestic economic conditions, uh, availability of skilled uh, personnel. And I would probably throw one more in there. This is just my, my I think some of the economic conditions that exist outside of the U.S. are, are going to have some sure. implications on uh, what's happening. So I, I'd like to get your, your take on those. Are, are those similar issues or challenges that your uh, members of BIA have raised? Across the board. Absolutely, each one of those. It's amazing how we're in alignment here, you know, because <laughs> we're all interested in business. We are, we are, and things like regulatory mandates and continued, yeah. continued mandates on business is a significant challenge. Um, you know, we were coming off of minimum wage last year, we had banned the box, and now we're staring down paid sick leave. Um, all these things are, drive up the cost of business in the state of New Jersey. Workforce. Um, we have a lot of initiatives underway to help our members on workforce development. Um, I think you know BIA is probably the, the uh, single largest organization bringing together higher education, right. private entity, and government together, a real P3 partnership around workforce development. Great example in manufacturing. We have some of our own members who actually partner with uh, Community College to work on the curriculum to create a certification program so that when the students go through it, they come out and they get a job right with those folks. Let me circle back to the, to the millionaire tax since, um, or, or surcharge since that just kind of <laughs> hit the scene yes. um, in the last week or so with the uh, news coming out about uh, the Senate president wanting to, to put that on the table. Um, 
do you see it just really as a, a millionaire's tax or do you think that it's going to you know be what it was in the past and touch some of those other those lower income gross income classes if you will now we we started looking at it, and I think what Senate President Sweeney did is I, I think he was um, very astute in what he's presenting because he understands that something less than a true millionaire tax isn't going to fly. So he's putting something new on the table. From our quick look at it, it looks like it's a true millionaire's tax. Okay. It's, it's the first, the, uh, the rate goes up at a million dollars. Uh, and, and, and then beyond that, and um, you know, the noise around it is, well, we've created so, there's so many more millionaires in the state of New Jersey now, they should be paying their fair share. And um, as we know, again, you know, small business does not a millionaire make. And right. also think about 20, 2015 and think about our economy. You know, it is more expensive to live, work, and play in the state mm -hmm. of New Jersey. And candidly, being a millionaire in New Jersey, you're not living high on the hog is no. what I'm guessing. So. No. It's interesting. Uh, we, we've heard the same conversation when we've done some uh, visits to, uh, to lawmakers and that and also to the uh, to certain facets of the, uh, the administration on the Democratic yes. side that uh, oh whether you know the number of millionaires have increased and I know um, my colleague who is out in California had a si similar situation or a similar discussion about that but what gets me is that they I guess don't look at the the whole they say we've got all this increase in millionaires and it's really the people that are just you know, creeping over the millionaire yeah, threshold. Exactly. And the folks at the higher end exactly. are the ones that are leaving and have the ability to leave. And it takes, I, I think, and I'm trying to remember the statistic, like 1% of the taxpayer base accounts for something like 20, 25, some large astronaut, majority large majority of the majority of, of, yes, of, of the, the gross economy. income yes, exactly. tax. Mm -hmm. So it seems that, well, there's this discussion about who's coming up to the level but not the discussion about who's leaving at the top and the top people such that you would have to have, you know, 10, 15 of new people coming in to equate to a half of a million oh, are no. leaving. Oh, no, it's just, the, it's, it's just the straw that will break the camel's back for anyone. I've uh, been going around the state, obviously, meeting with our members, doing a lot of speaking. A lot of town hall meetings you've been yeah, doing. A lot of town hall meetings through our Employers Legislative Committee. And um, Every single one of them, at the end, someone comes up to me and says, I'm on the verge of leaving the state, and here's why. In fact, one of what I'm sure is one of your members, I had a discussion with an accountant yesterday morning who wanted to talk to me about death tax, uh -huh. and I thought he wanted to talk about statistics, you know, uh -huh. but maybe we had one of our stats wrong or something. He says, no, I'm a forensic accountant, I don't do, I don't do that side of it, he said. But I, I need to know something. He goes, I read all your information and your data on outward migration. He goes, why aren't they listening to you? He said, because I'm going to be a statistic. I already bought my house in Florida, and I don't want to have my, what is it, 186th day right. out of the state, but it's coming. It's amazing. I had a call from a member, and I saw it was a Florida number on the message, and I said, okay. My first reaction is, what did we do wrong? Mm. Uh, and he said, I just want to know what's happening on this uh, reform of the death taxes. He says, because I'm trying to calculate and make sure I hit the six months in a day, yeah. and I want to, because I really like to stay in New Jersey, but if this isn't happening, I'm, I got to do this. Yeah, because every it, day we hear it. It's, yeah. it's terrible. And it's just more and more. But, it, uh, you know, having been down in, in Trenton and talking in, in the state capitol, the, you know, some of the key movers and shakers and, and the players, they all seem to just say, you know, oh, that, that's not why people are leaving. No. Well, let, me give you, let me give you another perspective on that, small business again, okay? Mm. In New Jersey, large majority of small business are family-owned business. Yes. Uh, when a business person does his, their business planning, succession planning, okay, their succession planning is their children because sure. they want to pass it in the family. Another example while I was around, I had a, um, end of one of my meetings, I had a businessman come up to me. He introduced me to his son and he said, uh, this is my son, I really would like him to continue the family business. He said, however, if I drop dead tomorrow, he's not going to be able to sustain it because he and um, my nephew are supposed to run the business. And between the estate tax and the inheritance yeah, tax, tax, they're not going to be able to afford to keep the business running. Absolutely. And that, that's the story we're trying to tell. So it, it, it's, again, it's not just about the rich people and getting the fair share from what, what is the perceived rich people. It's how are we impacting business? And this gentleman said, he goes, I'm not transferring my business here in the state of New Jersey. I'm going to take my business out. So what do we lose with that? We lose the taxable income. Come. We lose the property tax because yeah. business pays 44% of property tax in the state right. of New Jersey. We lose the jobs. The worst, we lose the spending power. All these folks who are on the verge of retirement built all their affluence in the state of New Jersey. And they're going to take it And they're going to take it and spend it in another market. Right. And, that's some, and it, it just boggles me when we have these conversations that they don't look at the whole. You know, this on a holistic basis of the implications. They, they center in on one particular piece. and 
and try to you know work the the issue down from well, there. Well, absolutely. And this year it was so taking it into the budget. This year the statement was we can't afford to lose four hundred million dollars in this budget cycle, which is what they calculated um, the taking the threshold up, up of the estate tax. To which our response was, well, let's see, we lost eight point seven billion dollars between nine and ten, and we lost fifteen point seven between two thousand and twenty ten. $15.7 billion in taxable income, income because of outward migration and people who left the state. If we had that taxable income in our general fund today, we wouldn't have a problem. So I don't know. It's, 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 as you say, it is mind-boggling about that, uh, the, how they just don't look at it. So what other issues uh, do you see percolating in 2015? And I know we want to get through June 30th and hopefully... Mm -hmm. Well, let me first ask you. Do you think we'll, we'll have a budget by June 30th? I do. You do? Mm -hmm. Good. I do. Good. I think it'll be 11.59 on June 30th <laughs> p.m., but I think we'll have it. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just wondering if we remember the days when, you know, in the previous administration, uh, you know, we shut down and it was just like almost, go well, it was a ghost town in Atlantic City because they weren't deemed yeah. to be, uh, the uh, regulators uh, weren't deemed to be, uh, what do they call it, uh, critical staff. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, so essential personnel. Essential yeah, exactly. personnel. Essential personnel. Right, right. And then that. the governor came in, and one of his uh, first executive orders was to deem you know, that the that, thing, that that would never happen again. Yeah. You couldn't could shut down Lake City. The, the joke back then, we happened to be visiting with friends we met in Las Vegas when the state shut down here. So the big news in Las Vegas was how they just shut down Atlantic City, and everybody out there is laughing, going, do they not understand how much money they're losing because they just day. shut down Lake City over political reasons? Yeah, I think the reality sunk in very quickly, and that's why you know people came to... Yeah came to an agreement there. I don't think we'll see anything like that okay. again this year. Well, that's good, because mm -hmm. I, 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 we certainly, I mean, our members have had uh, a really bad tax season, and so I don't think uh, having something like this, day, having the state shut down, would just yeah. not, not be the icing yeah. on the cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be flattening the cake. So other issues that you see that may uh, come to rise, I, I know one that just came to our attention is, and I won't call it a mandate, but a program to, I guess, kind of force or drive savings and, and, yeah. and creating a state 401k plan, if you will. Uh, I initially took a look at it and I said, is this another mandate? But um, I got a call from uh, one of the legislators said, well, you know, I had the same feeling, Ralph, but you know, I'm thinking maybe it's not, maybe it won't be a bad idea because of if you eliminate a, a couple of things like the fiduciary responsibility, uh, not being compliant with your RISA, and yes. that's also, what, have you looked at that? I think it's S2813, I yeah. believe, is, or we're 31, 31. We're continuing to look at it. My first gut reaction was mandate. <laughs> and then my own staff said to me, wait, 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 we, we don't think so because uh, it's, it, it, it falls short of being a requirement with all the things that would go with it. I still look at it, though, and say, but you're still telling business they have to do something. So anytime business has to offer something, they got to go into their back office, right? Mm -hmm. And they got to... Yeah. Jury rig something to make that offering happen, which means right. they got to fool around with their systems. They got to, they, so that still costs money. Right. You know, somewhere it still costs money. Something I thought about, and because part of it, what I saw in that bill is, if you didn't offer, there were there were uh, fines or penalties, so uh, where you were monetary fines uh, associated with. What if we took a uh, an approach of offering businesses incentives to? to get people. Well, this right. is, so you're, you're right on the theme of what we call our paradigm shift in, okay. at, at BIA when I go out and I talk about um, issues. Why can't we get our legislators to start talking about rewarding good business conduct right. as opposed to legislating to the perceived bad actor who mm -hmm. generally is the exception to the norm and then we drag all the good guys along. Paid sick leave's a great example of that, Ralph. We have over 70% of New Jersey businesses provide some type of paid sick leave. Over 90% provide some type of paid time off. Okay, Those are some big statistics. So now we're legislating and wanting to put all those folks who already provide programs in a box because they're going to have to do it the way the you know, government says yes, you're going to do it um, versus trying to incentivize others to come along. And we know, I mean, why do businesses provide good welfare programs? Why do they provide health and days off and 401ks? Because it's what makes them competitive. And when they're competitive, they get good employees. Right. When they get good employees, they make a good product, leads to good sales, leads to profit, they reinvest, right? Isn't that, uh, it, isn't that that's the what formula? Works. <laughs> that's, that's what seems to work in our business. Yes. I, so I guess the question is, 
Is, is it really broken? Do we need to do a fix to this thing? But that's, ex yeah. that's exactly, that is exactly, and again, it's like that perceived bad actor. Go after them in a different way. We, we continue to want to uh, legislate behavior, whether it's individual behavior or business behavior. Yeah. Every piece of legislation is about legislating behavior. And when the legislature you know, walks in and starts dictating the terms and conditions of employment, when good terms and conditions already exist, it's not necessary. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about 2015. What do you see on the horizon for 2016? Any, mm -hmm. any big things? I, I, you know, will be, oh, you know, the national elections will be coming. What, what can happen there? Who's going to be in the race? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and that's been a concern. I, you know, the governor's been out of the state a lot. Um, and I, I know people are saying, is, is anything really getting done? So. We, are there any, is, is there anything surfacing that you're, you're hearing about that will be a big issue or a big topic in 2016? We have three gorillas in the state of New Jersey. Property tax, mm. okay. Yeah. Um, we have infrastructure funding, and then we have the pension. Those are the, the three gorillas that are really the systems that are so comprehensive and broken and they're difficult to fix, right? So the governor was trying to take on one, and he stayed very focused on that. We get, he has to continue to try that, and we have to be there to help support that. But the other one's transportation. You know, just like on July when we come out with the state and inheritance, and we don't want to do too many things at one time, we gotta ha we gotta step forward with a comprehensive and smart transportation strategy. And it can't just be about the revenue raise. Everybody's so focused on the revenue raise, yes. we're forgetting about how do we spend the money once we raise the revenue. That's my concern. I'm I'm with you too. I mean, in our op-ed, we said you know if there's an increase, but and then people stop there. And then they didn't go to read the further statements about, you know, more accountability, responsibility for funding and spending, a, a mandate to not, you know, um, take funds out yeah. and move them to els elsewhere. Well, and we can't just put it, and we can't raise that revenue and put it right back into what we know as the transportation trust fund. That fund is broken. So you know, you're a numbers guy. All right, you got bad credit on that fund. You go in there and you want to do some um, leveraging of that, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Right. So we're going to waste money if we put it in there. We need to establish uh, a new bank that's a responsible bank that isn't just an ATM, because TTFs become like an ATM. <laughs> um, and we need to ensure that we prioritize the projects the right way and then fund them the right way. Okay. I guess we have no shortage of issues. No uh, shortage of issues. issues. <laughs> I, wish, I wish the list would get, get, get decreased. You know, accountants love to say, check off the thing and, and this is done and we've, we've called, covered all the bases. But uh, anything else that we, that we haven't chatted about that you think? Well, of? you know, we, sh we shouldn't leave on a negative note, okay? I'm a, a glass half full girl and there's a lot of good stuff going on in the state of New Jersey. Yeah. So I think that um, we're doing an excellent job. We talked about workforce development a little bit before. I think workforce development efforts are outstanding. We still remain highly educated state, the best in the country when it comes yes. to education. So let's not, let's not forget that. And a cost comes with that. A little bit of why is it expensive in New Jersey? Because we've got the number one education system. So that's positive. Um, our efforts in innovation, you know, I, I love the uh, idea of taking the tour up and down the turnpike and seeing what's going on. So you start down South Jersey, you talk mm -hmm. about innovation, and you see what's going on with Rowan University and right. their whole tech center that's around true. there. Okay, that, That's an innovation ecosystem ready to burst. That's a great opportunity for us. Come up to Central Jersey, we've got Rutgers and Princeton and all these great opportunities for innovation going on around there. And you go up to Newark and you see NJIT and what they're incubating in terms of innovation, partnerships with Rutgers, and now you have Hackensack um, Hospital and Seton Hall creating another medical school. Cool. Yeah. So you, know, you can go up and, down, up and down the turnpike and you can see all these great seeds that are gonna lead to jobs and opportunity. And you know everybody's like bad-mouthing our incentive programs, right. but those incentive programs are trying to drive growth in the right places, and I think five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years from now, we're, we're going to see those things flourish. Again, Michelle, thank you so much for being here at this Issues Watch Extra segment. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you. We look forward to maybe getting you back maybe in thank a little you. while to talk and update us on what we talked about here today. So uh, thank you for coming and thank all of you out there for, for tuning in to the program.